Hello everyone and welcome to episode 136 of the Cherry Hut podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a crafty crochet knitting and sewing podcast and you will find the show notes for this episode on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and I'll also pop a link in the little down bar below. If you'd like to support this podcast you can give me a thumbs up, you can click subscribe and you can either also ding the bell if you want to get notifications of when I post a video. So hello, how are you? Welcome, welcome here and welcome back if you're coming back. Um, I hope you've had a lovely summer everyone. Well I guess that doesn't apply to everyone does it because if you're in the uh, southern hemisphere you'll be looking forward to spring and most people here seem to be looking forward to autumn um, and it is starting there's definitely that end of summer feel now we can start to feel the first signs of things turning but anyway um, yes been another busy time since I last spoke to you lots of things going on here um, mostly surrounding my lovely daughter um, who took her A-levels earlier this year. She got her results and she got accepted into the university that she chose, her first choice, so that's very exciting. And she's passed her driving test since we last spoke and um, yeah, it just feels like there's an awful lot of uh, things going on at the moment. So we're doing all of her university prep at the moment, trying to get things together, everything she needs. Um, because we'll have to go and uh, take her there and get her all moved in so it's kind of a big deal isn't it for them and for us <laughs> when they go I'm talking to the mothers at the moment sorry if that doesn't apply to you but um yeah can't say I'm looking forward to it but there we go it will be fine I'm sure but anyway while I'm here let's get into what I've been making uh, since we last spoke. So it's all crochet for you today so no knitting or sewing I'm afraid and I've got let's start with the whips the works in progress. So first up was a uh, a crochet square which is going to be a blanket that I shared with you last time it was inspired by a vintage picture which I'll pop in here that I showed you last time and I was trying to figure out I was kind of reverse engineering the pattern because um, it was just a picture in a magazine and I tried it out in different yarns so we decided that the um, Starcraft bamboo naturals bamboo and cotton was the best one to go for which just gave that nice sort of um, just the right feel the right kind of what's the word not texture exactly but you know the density of fabric it gave the right feel of fabric it was sort of open enough but yet you could still see the design can you see the design this is where I need the design board the only trouble is with this I've got a very pale background on mine and I now realize now I've done this that I need a pale side and a darker side so some sort of darker felt, I guess. I don't know. Let's put it on here and see if that makes it show up anymore. There we go. Possibly it does. Um, yes, so that is the square. That is the yarn. And I have made up quite a few so far. This is my pile that I have. No ends woven in I'm afraid but only two per square so it won't take me long and I have got how many have I got? I've got 17 here. So I need a lot more of these balls of yarn to finish this blanket um, <clears throat> which I need to wait for now. I found some um, in stash that I had um, so yes, yeah, so I'm waiting for an order to come through. I've asked, because I work with um, lovely Starcraft, I'm a Starcraft blog star, um, they're very kind at sometimes helping us source yarn for projects. Um, so yes, yeah, so they're going to help me out there and hopefully send me some lovely yarn and I can finish this blanket up. 
so yeah I'm just waiting on that to come but luckily I found at least some to be going along with but um, yeah I'll need to wait now for more supplies so that's how far I've got with it and that's kind of on hold for the time being and um, in the last video when I talked about it some people were asking me for the pattern for the square will I be doing one the answer is yes and I've actually been working on it um, so I have got the square written up and I've started doing the charts and everything and I think I know how the border is going to go as well I was testing that out the other day so I've got some notes on that as well so yeah that's actually progressing quite well it's one of the very few things I've actually managed to get on with um, over the summer so yes hopefully well I can't make any promises because there's still things to be happening this year I'm hoping at some point later in the year things will calm down a bit and I can sort of return to my cherry heart activities as normal but at the moment that's still just not possible so yeah I can't make any definite pronouncements about when things will happen but uh, yes it is progressing well so that's something let's pop this out the way and let's talk about the other work in progress which is actually now a whip so this is my rosy posy square blanket it's just a little blanket little baby blanket I suppose so uh, last time we spoke I think well I had quite a lot of the squares made up how many I can't say quite a lot of them though I'm not sure if I quite had them all ready to go um, yes and I actually managed uh, finally to post the tutorial for this pattern as well so this is a pattern of mine um, it's you know ancient very old pattern of mine and I had it up on my blog um, from years ago and it was up there as a photo tutorial so it's been available for a long time but I have now done a video tutorial for it as well because I think just I don't know it's just videos is the thing now isn't it it seems everything's sort of video um, I don't know if everyone prefers it a lot of people seem to prefer it and sort of expect it to be honest now to be in video format rather than anything else so anyway I thought this would be a good little one to do because it's only a few rounds they're not very big they're quite nice for a little bit of colour play um, so yeah it's just a quite a nice little square to make up so that is up I'll pop a card in and a link um, in my show notes and everything for you if you want to find that video um, and yeah so I've added them all together I just crocheted them together from the back um, and I went through with both loops so you can see the little um, you know the little what am I trying to say well you can see the thread so what I did with the colors on the back is I use different colours for different rows so rather than just use one colour to join which might have been more sensible I couldn't decide whether I wanted sort of the white as a kind of neutral or if I wanted the darker pink so the white sort of showed up really brightly against the pink the green showed up really against the darker pink the darker pink showed up against these greens and the whites so I guess the pink was kind of a neutral colour but again anyway I couldn't decide is the point so I went for different colours of yarn depending on which row I did <laughs> I thought because it's on the back it doesn't really matter so where it's a mostly dark or ready dark pink or red what are we calling this it's a sort of dark pink I've gone for a dark pink join and down here but then as I've started to be it's more the paler colours I've gone for the pink and so on and then in the white section I've got a white join and then as you go down to the green I've put a green join in so that hasn't I mean that's kind of worked 
in some ways so like in there all the joins are green in the green squares and here they're all pink in the pink squares but there's still areas where you know like there you can see the darker pink and it's on two lighter ones and that goes right along I could I did contemplate <laughs> literally joining in darker pink down here where there's the pinks touching could have got away with it there because there's a pink next to it and then swap swapping literally changing colors and finishing the rest of the join in white I could have done because there's white either side so I did contemplate doing that but then I thought I won't bother I'll probably join it together and then not think about it much after that so that's what I did that was kind of my compromise because I decided that I wanted this oh what was that um I decided I wanted this kind of gradient-ish layout for the squares um I've seen other people do this on blankets and I just quite liked the idea it would probably work well it would definitely work better on a bigger blanket but I just like the idea of kind of trying it out so I've gone for the outer colour I've gone with the darks and then into the pinks the whites and then the greens and I have every single combination in here as well quite often I will kind of edit those combos if you like and I'll pluck out the ones that I don't think look quite so favourable together such as is there an example of one that I don't like so much let's see I think I thought they were all fine so I didn't worry about it maybe this actually so this where the bright bright green is right next to the darkest pink perhaps wouldn't be my first choice I might have avoided that normally um, because it's quite a sharp, clashy sort of um, pair of colours to have together. Uh, so normally I would do all the combos, but perhaps, perhaps miss out those where those two colours were touching. Those see like there, I think it looks okay. But anyway, but this time I didn't. I literally just did every single available combination of these four colours in the square, and I did them twice, which left me with. 48 squares I think just try to frantically work it out six eights is that right yeah right so 48 squares um, and then for the border I've just gone with I went with a pale pink round first like I said I thought that was the most sort of neutral to fit along the edge of all the colors um, because I knew I wanted this darker pink to finish but I just I didn't want to highlight that dark pink next to the green on this green side so I just put a little bit of pink in just to separate it out a little bit so I've got a couple of rounds of that polar pink just a very simple row of grannies round and then I did what did I do then I've just got some single um, crochets round so that's US doubles UK singles and then I just finished with this little pom-pom round as well because that's another thing I've been sort of had on my list of things I fancy not having a go at because I, I knew how to make it but just I wanted to use it on a blanket so it's a list of things I wanted to use at some point and I thought this would fit the bill I kind of like how they I like dangly bits if you were a long time viewer slash if you're back in the days of blogging you'll know I'm a, I'm a I love a dangly bit I love a tassel or a bobble or something hanging off um yeah so there we go that's finished this is the blanket that I have no use for whatsoever that I just made purely to make it really because I like the colors and I wanted to make something in these colors and I wanted to try it do this border and yeah that's why it exists but now what do I do with it now I don't know but I guess I can just put it away and hope that I get a use for it in future you know maybe someone else in the family will have a baby or I don't know it's a bit early to be thinking about grandchildren so but maybe someone else in the family will have a baby and I could use it for that but um 
Oh, and the yarn. Let's quickly just say about the yarn. I've mentioned this before, but just to recap, it's the Sheep Years Stone Washed yarn. I'm sure you're familiar. Um, I've listed the four colours. I'll pop them in show notes again. I have before and I will again. I also put it on the tutorial. Um, but yeah, I had this sort of basket full of colours left over from other things. And yeah, I just used the colours from that range, which I think look really lovely in this blanket. So those are my whips. <clears throat> Well, sorry, they're not really whips actually. They're just ones that you knew about, that I talked about last time. And now I'm updating you on, but now for new ones, new to you ones. So first of all, an interesting project. So I received a message from my brother-in-law asking for a crocheted t-shirt. I couldn't have been more surprised. Um, I don't know if it's the Italy thing. So I mentioned again, last podcast that we'd been on holiday to Italy. Did I mention it in the last podcast? Anyway, we'd been to holiday, on holiday in Italy. I might have just put it on my Instagram is what I'm now thinking, as I recall. Anyway, lots of people wearing crochet, very in over there, lots of men wearing crochet as well. Yeah. And my sister also went to Italy, slightly different, well, just down the coast from where we went as it turned out just by coincidence um so i don't know if it was that but anyway he requested a crochet t-shirt so i was like uh okay yeah sure i can do that so he said i'm happy to pay you to make it and everything um which was really nice of him to offer obviously you know <laughs> he knows enough to offer so that's good isn't it but anyway i said um he was happy to buy the yarn and pay me to make it. I said, look, you buy the yarn, I'll happily make it for you. That's fine. You know, we're helping each other out all the time. That's fine. I'm happy to do that. So I have made him a crochet t-shirt. I'll just get right into it because I've almost, well, it's finished, but they haven't blocked it yet. So here it is. So he sent me um, an inspiration picture. Let's just show you that so you can see how I've done. So there's the picture I had for inspiration. That was what he liked. Um, that's actually knitted. Of course, he didn't know that. But um, but as you look closely, you can see it's actually knitted. But I did think, well, it does lend itself. It, it could, you know, from the picture when you can't see the stitches, it does look like it could be crocheted. So that's that was my source picture. We did have a look on Ravelry to look for some patterns and there were a few men's patterns but the, they were quite sparse and there was nothing like that at all. Um, so here was my interpretation. So I asked him for one of his tops that he liked the fit of so that I could sort of use that as a base for my measurements. And I made a sample up and I kind of just guesstimated from there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out actually. It was one of those ones where I started off quite confident, lost it in between, and then kind of now it's finished, I'm feeling, ah, okay, yeah, I think this is gonna be okay. So um, yeah, it's quite simple. I added a little bit of slope into the shoulders, so it's not like a complete, it's not just completely square. So I added a few increases up to the shoulders to get a bit more height around the shoulders and I didn't come down so far at the back so that it's uh, got a bit of a scallop. I did add a little sort of tag to be like the, uh, you know, just so that that very easy pick it up. We've mentioned, I've mentioned this before, like when I have my handmade jumpers, I sort of end up looking and going, which way is the front and which is the back? It's probably quite easy to see on this, but I just thought that tag, it eliminates any doubt, doesn't it? Um, again, with the sleeves, just had a few slight decreases to bring it in on the sleeve and then a few around the sort of band. You can see how it's curling because I haven't blocked it yet just to bring it in around the band to finish the sleeves. Um, and so construction wise, I actually made the front and the back at the same time. So can I show you this in any coherent sense? So I crocheted up here, 
did a great big long strip long enough to come all the way down the back and then I've just joined under the armpit so then I crocheted all the way along in a long strip so it started it looked kind of like a blanket really um, sort of working out where the midpoint would be for the shoulder to do my increases and then once I split at the neck then I just worked the front panel across to here sort of getting the neck scoop in then I did the back the same just worked up and down the back then I rejoined and finished working the front and the back at the same time and then just added the sleeves on afterwards so that was how I did it so the only problem that I encountered well I had to rip back quite a few times and redo things just um, there's this sort of arrangement of stripes this well the pattern I've just sort of made it up as I went along basically um, I just went with a stitch count of 12 I think as my base and then just worked various different stitch combinations that would fit into that sort of you know twos threes and four repeats of two threes and four multiples that would fit into that quite nicely so yeah I did rip back bits when I well wasn't happy with it and redid things so it did take a little bit of time to you know get the look that I was kind of happy with but I think that was okay so then my only other major problem was last weekend I had the body and I had one sleeve on so I took it for a try on just to see if the sleeve length was going to be okay and the fit was okay crossing my fingers because obviously I'd gone up and down you know because it's made this way <laughs> I was like if it doesn't fit I'm going to be in trouble here so it did the sleeve length was all fine the width of it was fine so that was good the only trouble is it didn't have quite enough length on the bottom but of course it's not easy to add length on the side of crochet if you think of your blanket you know you're working your rows that way if someone says oh I suddenly want it wider you're like well I can't really do that <laughs> without undoing the whole thing and starting again which I didn't want to do so what I did my compromise solution was I worked treble crochets so that's UK trebles US doubles round and I just color changed whenever there was a stripe color change so I worked the first one round and just went by these stripes and whenever that changed I just switched colour so it was a bit of a pain to do because there's a lot of colour changes in there and sometimes look it's only one stitch and then you're changing again um, so I did that and I, I just did a few well quite a few rounds in that style to add some extra length on the bottom there and I think I'm quite happy with how it turned out actually it's not perfect obviously if it was going to be exactly right I would have had to rip the entire thing back and start all over again and quite frankly from that point I couldn't face it so <laughs> so I've added some um, so that's how I've done it and actually I think that looks fine I think it actually looks really okay it looks really good so yeah I'm happy with that solution and then I just added a band to match the arms and the neckline to finish at the bottom so overall I'm pretty happy with how that turned out hopefully the recipient will also be happy so finally I have a project that I did actually start last time but I didn't have time to talk about it and I hadn't got very far so um, I've saved it for this time and this is the project I'm making it's a stash buster basically so last time I was talking about a Christmas fairy that I made and I'd used this Cascade Pima cotton is it Pima? Pima? P-I-M-A Pima cotton um, and I'd pulled this out because I thought some of the colours would work well for that fairy which they did when I had all the colours out I thought these colours there's some really gorgeous ones in here and I've got a decent amount of it I must be able to find a nice project to use these on um, so I had a think and I remembered a project that my friend uh, Sam who you might know remember as the Betsy Makes podcast when she used to do her podcast and she had made a pattern of these beautiful fillet work crochet hexagons um, 
So I thought, ooh, I'm going to find that pattern. I'm going to do that. So let me show you all the hexagons I have so far. Well, actually, let me show you one of the hexagons. Let's put it on the old board. Here we go. There it is. Isn't that beautiful? So this is the leaves and lace pattern and it's by Hafner, Hafner Linson, who I'm sure many of you will be familiar with her work because she makes so many beautiful things. Yeah, so there's a blanket made out of these. So this is the um, motif and then it kind of has a board around and then they're all joined together and she's got the charts for it and everything and there's uh, the half hexagons are all charted out and everything. So it's lovely. So. Uh, now I've got the pattern all memorised, I can just work through those. It's lovely. Very soothing and enjoyable crochet. Let's pick another colour, make another one. It's just very satisfying. I've made one in each colour so far that I've got, apart from this dark brown, which I'm not sure whether I want to put in or not. <laughs> and white, I haven't done white. But here's all my other colours, all the other colours. And I'm really enjoying that lovely rainbow stack of motifs I've got there. So that is just over half of the amount I need. And I've got plenty more of the colours. I haven't quite got enough of a couple of them to make a whole nother hexagon out, but I figure these can just be half ones and that will be fine. Um, so yeah, that's just my sort of little side project. So I always find you want, you know, it's okay to have projects that you need to think about and I quite enjoy that, but there's quite often when you, you know, you want to sit and perhaps pay more attention to something, like if we were watching a film together and I'll still want to be doing something because it's kind of alien for me to just sit and watch something. I do sometimes, obviously, but I quite like to just have a little something on the go. But this is something, now I've memorised it, I can just work through one of these. I don't have to worry about stopping and changing yarns or anything. I can just merrily work on that and still stay really focused on what's happening. So yeah, it's nice to just have a, a project you don't have to think about. And then you know, and then when I had a bit more time to focus, I could work on something like this where I'm paying much more attention to how the pattern looks and what thinking about what I might do next for the next row and so on and so forth. So yeah, so I'm really enjoying that. I actually made this stack and it's been sitting there for a few days now. So I've kind of just been enjoying the view on that one. But now I've finished my t-shirt, I might start making some more of these again. Um, it's a case of working out which colours that I can make a whole nother hexagon out of and making those up and then seeing what I've got left to do the halves out of. Mm. And then I've just got to join them all and do the border. I did order, of course, whenever stash busting, it is the law that you then end up having to order more yarn. So for the borders, I wanted a neutral colour and my choices were either white which is kind of my go-to for finishing which I liked but also I had a pale beige as well and um, so I tested out you know I did a little trial board around a couple of them in both colours to see which I preferred and I've decided I'm going to go with the paler beige so I did have to order some more of those you know to have enough to complete that of course I mean I, d I didn't want all kinds of multicoloured borders though and you know edges around each one though I didn't think that would look very nice and I and then what would you do with the border you just need a certain amount of one colour to do the border don't you unless you're going for a multicolored border but again that wasn't the like I wanted so I ended up ordering some more yarn but hopefully it's for the greater good of stash busting <laughs> I'm on a bit of a stash busting kick at the minute because um there's just some that I need, you know, I need more space basically. I've got too many things and the space to keep them, which is kind of the cut-off point for me. It's, you know, there's nothing wrong with enjoying a good stash of yarn. I enjoy that as much as the next person, but when I haven't got space to physically put it anymore, it's an issue. So, 
yes I did try to sell some on Ravelry actually but it didn't really didn't really happen so I don't know whether to try selling it on Instagram or because I have some that I would you know I'm just I think I can let go of and like I say I can't stash bust it all so yeah I was thinking maybe I would sell some that this you know I've been thinking about it for a long time so yeah maybe I'll do that have one of those what do they call it d stash accounts on Instagram I don't know it's the difficulty of postage as well isn't it because obviously I'm in the UK so if people want to buy from the UK that's fairly straightforward um, for me to send out and quite you know relatively cheap so that's fine but if you wanted to send it anywhere else in the world it gets so expensive so quickly and I don't even know what the rules are for doing it anymore because since we've had Brexit that's changed how we send things to Europe I don't think it's too complicated but it has made it more expensive and slightly more complicated and then to send to sort of America or Australia or anywhere else it's it's just astronomical now and there's no point getting yourself a sort of a bit of a bargain on a skein of yarn just to sort of pay two or three times that on the postage to get it to you is there so yeah I don't know but anyway never mind um let's wrap up there and um yeah I don't think I've got anything else to say to finish we'll just wrap up there I think anyway it was lovely to talk to you again um it will probably be a probably be a little while before we speak again because like I say we've got the whole university thing to do um she'll be very far from home as well so she's going a long long way she's really um what's the word jumping in at the deep end on that so there'll be no little weekend trip home so yeah so we will you know we'll take a whole weekend um sort of a long weekend to get her down there get her moved in and then be able to have time to travel back and everything so um yeah we'll do that and then like I say we've got there's a few other things bubbling along in the background that um probably are going to consume quite a bit of my time for a while yet but anyway hopefully I'll snatch some time to pop in and see how the old crafty world is getting on and um yeah until then I hope you have some lovely calm crafting moments and I'll speak to you soon bye blah 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 which was what's happening Bert um pigeon that's what's happening so I've got Bertie rustling around in leaves and goodness knows what outside Bert what are you doing come on out trampling all over my garden. Disgraceful.